Welcome to Christ the King, and today happens to be the feast of Francis of Assisi. And the great thing about Francis was that he was passionately in love with Christ. And hopefully as we pray together, we renew ourselves and recommit ourselves to Christ, the one we follow. So welcome, and let us begin with an opening hymn. We sign ourselves in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. May the grace and peace of our Lord Jesus, the love of God, the compassion of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. And with your spirit. So last weekend we heard about the, vi the vineyard and today Jesus tells another parable about a vineyard but is dramatically different from last week's. But he says in John's Gospel, I am the vine and you are the branches, and apart from me you can do nothing. So as we begin this liturgy, let us join ourselves to the vine, Jesus Christ, that we will be fruit-bearing branches. Lord, you have created all of creation. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Christ, you are the Son of the Father who created this world, and you were sent to save it. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. And Lord, we have been created in your image and likeness to be stewards of your creation. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us life everlasting. Amen. And let us pray. 
Eternal God, your love for us surpasses all our hopes and desires. Forgive our failings, keep us in your peace, and lead us in the right way. We pray this through Christ our Lord. Amen. And we listen to our sacred scriptures. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Let me now sing of my friend, my friend's song concerning his vineyard. My friend had a vineyard on a fertile hillside. He spaded it, cleared it of stones, and planted the choicest vines. Within it, he built a watchtower and hewed out a wine press. Then he looked for the crop of grapes, but what it yielded was wild grapes. Now inhabitants of Jerusalem and people of Judah judge between me and my vineyard. What more was there to do for my vineyard that I had not done? Why, when I looked for the crop of grapes, did it bring forth wild grapes? Now I will let you know what I mean to do with my vineyard. Take away its hedge, give it to grazing, break through its wall, let it be trampled. Yes, I will make it a ruin. It shall not be pruned or hoed, but overgrown with thorns and briars. I will command the clouds not to send rain upon it. The vineyard of the Lord of hosts is the house of Israel, and the people of Judah are God's cherished plant. The Lord looked for judgment, but see, bloodshed, for justice, but hark, the outcry, the word of the Lord. Bring us back, let 
Let your face shine on, we shall be saved. The vineyard of the Lord is the house of Israel. A reading from the letter of Paul to the Philippians. Brothers and sisters, have no anxiety at all, but in everything, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, make your requests known to God. Then the peace of God that surpasses all understanding will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is gracious, if there is any excellence, if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. Keep on doing what you have learned and received and heard and seen in me. Then the God of peace will be with you. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus said to the chief priests and elders of the people, hear another parable. There was a landowner who planted a vineyard, put a hedge around it, dug a wine press in it, and built a tower. Then he leased it to tenants and went on a journey. When vintage time drew near, he sent his servants to the tenants to obtain his produce. But the tenants seized the servants, and one they beat, another they killed, and a third they stoned. Again, he sent other servants more numerous than the first, but they treated them in the same way. Finally, he sent his son to them thinking, they will respect my son. But when the tenants saw the son, they said to one another, this is the heir. Come, let us kill him and acquire his inheritance. They seized him, threw him out of the vineyard and killed him. What will the owner of the vineyard do to those tenants when he comes? And they answered, He will put those wretched ones to a wretched death and lease his vineyard to other tenants who will give him his, the produce at the proper times. And Jesus said to them, Did you never read in the scriptures the stone which the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. By the Lord, this has been done, and it is wonderful in our eyes. Therefore, I say to you, the kingdom of God will be taken away from you and given to a people that will produce its fruit. The Gospel of the Lord.
Usually when Jesus uh, tells a parable, he says, and the kingdom of God is like this. And then he tells the parable. And today, it's not a really bright future if he's talking about the kingdom of God in this parable. But some parables are about the present world. And they tend to be more tragic parables. We're used to hearing uh, a good uh, ending to the parable, but this is hardly a good ending from one, point, one viewpoint. So the, this parable is an example of a tragic uh, parable. So it's about a downward spiral. So remember how the parable started? That's how we have to, to, to look at this. So it begins in a very good place. So the owner planted a vineyard, lovely, put a hedge around it, dug a vat and built a tower, and then he leased it out to tenant farmers. You know, a very good story. And then what happens? Um, when it comes time for his share of the produce, the tenants get their share, um, they change their mind. They, uh, they make a decision, and we're not told why they, they make this decision, but they decide that they don't want to share anything with the owner of the vineyard. And so there's all types of violence. They made a decision that led to great violence. They kill the messengers, and then a second batch, and then they finally, they kill the son. And so the owner uh, sends his delegation and slays all of them. So the decision they made, we're not gonna share any of this produce or profits with anybody but ourselves, does not have a happy ending for them. So why does Jesus tell such a grim parable? I think he's warning us uh, about making critical decisions in our lives, in our communal lives, that can lead to a communal downward spiral. Uh, they decide to cut other people out. Not a good thing, is it? there probably was enough for everyone to share. And uh, why did they make this decision? Was it greed? You know, we could say, oh yeah, they were greedy. They wanted it all for themselves. Or was it pride that they were more important than the owner, that they're more, the most important people, so let's just take care of ourselves. Uh, so I think it's a, it's a parable about how pride can get us into trouble when we think we are better than anyone else. So it can speak to us on many levels of our life. So you think about a family. A family is a good thing, right? You're all connected, mom, dad, kids, grandma, grandpa, uncles, aunts, cousins. It's all very good, the family. And it only takes one person to make a decision that can bring the family into a downward spiral, right? When their dreams, when their ideas, when their plans are more important and they strike out at other family members. Sometimes that happens. Or our country, we know it's a great country and there's land for everyone and we can feed the world probably, but uh, you know, we elect people to work for the common good. So sometimes politicians, if they only worry about getting elected instead of taking care of the common good, it can lead to a downward spiral, a downward spiral of violence and anger. Sound familiar in what we're going through these days? Uh, we elect people to serve the common good. And when they don't do it, you know, it hurts everybody. And our planet, God has given us this beautiful planet 
but when people exploit it for profit or misuse the natural resources for their own personal gain, you know, it puts the planet in a downward spiral. So it's all about decision making, the decisions we make as family, as a country, as a human family living on this planet. So think about it. Um, none of us can change everything by ourselves. We need to be connected. We need to work together uh, for our families, for our country, for our planet. So I think the parable reminds us that we shouldn't be prideful. You know, sometimes as Americans, we might think, you know, we're the greatest country in the world. Maybe that's true, maybe it's not true. But God sees every nation equally. In God's eyes, there are no boundaries. And so we try to share what we have with the needy and the poor, and that's gospel teaching. Uh, we should never accept the idea that our lives, our ideas, our agendas are more important than other people. We need to work together or else there will be problems. We are connected, you know, we are connected to one another. We are connected to God, just as the family's connected, a church is connected to the members, connected to each other, we're connected to Christ, and we are connected to God, and we're all equals. So when we make choices that are uh, pride choices, uh, the spiral of violence begins. So if one goes down, we all go down. It's what happened in the vineyard. Everybody lost their life. Uh, so we need to hold one another, work together. But if we go down, it's a long way down. So Jesus is saying, be careful how you think. Be careful how you make decisions. And since we are connected with God, this great mystery, we remind ourselves as we profess our faith, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there, he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. And so our prayers are called the prayers of the people. And so obviously we always pray for the common good, uh, for the church around the world, for the human family, for God's creation. And so as we listen to these prayers, let us pray that we will do and make decisions that are good not only for ourselves, but for the many. For the church, cultivated as God's vineyard and grafted into Christ, the true vine, may we bear fruit in abundance and produce, produce a rich harvest for the life of the world, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For leaders of nations and all those in positions of authority, may they lead Earth's peoples to create ways of justice, not of bloodshed or oppression, we pray. For those who serve our country in public office and all who seek election this fall, may they overcome differences and work together for the common good, we pray. Lord, hear our 
for laborers who face poor working conditions or unjust wages. May they receive the dignity and compensation they deserve, we pray. For those consumed by worry and anxiety, burdened with illness, or afflicted with depression, grief, or loneliness, especially those whose hardship has increased during this pandemic, may they know the peace of God which surpasses all understanding, we pray. For this Christian parish, and for all who join us in worshiping God, may we set our minds and hearts on all that is true and honorable, just and pure, excellent and worthy of praise, we pray. For all who work to heal the sick and comfort those in distress and care for the dying, and for all the faithful departed who spend their lives in the service of Christ, we pray. And loving God, you have created us in your image and likeness, and you have given us minds and hearts, and with the help of the Spirit, we can make wise and good decisions Strengthen our decision-making that we may always do what is best and good, not only for ourselves, but for others. We pray this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness, we have this bread to offer you, which earth has given, human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness, we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine, work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Lord God, we ask you to be pleased with each one of us and to accept the sacrifice we offer you with humble and contrite hearts. And let us pray, people of God, that our Sunday Eucharist will be acceptable to God, the Almighty and Holy One. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Loving God, receive the gifts of your people, which our Lord Jesus Christ has asked us to offer in his memory, may our obedient service bring us the fullness of your redemption. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And, with your spirit. and lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. And let us give thanks to the Lord our God. All-powerful and ever-living God, we do well always and everywhere to give you thanks. All things are of your making. All times and seasons obey your laws. But you chose to create the human race in your own image, setting it over the whole world in all its wonder. You have made humans the stewards of creation to praise you day by day for the marvels of your wisdom and power through Jesus the Christ. 
And so as his disciples, as your children, we stop everything and we join our voices with the angels and the saints, with all of creation and with the church around the world in an endless hymn of praise. Lord, you are holy indeed, and all creation rightly gives you praise. Let your spirit come down upon these gifts to make them holy, that they will become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. Before he was given up to death, a death he freely accepted. Jesus, while at supper, took bread and said the blessing. And he broke the bread and he gave it to them saying, take this, all of you, and eat it. This is my body, which will be given up for you. When the supper was ended, Jesus took a cup filled with wine, and again he gave you praise and thanks. And he gave the cup to them, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. This is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant. This blood will be shed for you and for all so that sin may be forgiven. Do this in memory of me. The great mystery of our faith. in memory of the death and the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, your Christ, we offer you, most holy God, this life-giving bread, this saving cup, giving thanks that you have counted us worthy to be in your presence and to serve you. May all of us who share the body and the blood of Christ be brought together in unity by the Holy Spirit. And Lord, remember your church and all your people spread throughout the world and make us grow in love and justice together with Francis, the Bishop of Rome, Bernard, our local bishop, all the baptized, all believers, all who seek you. Remember our sisters and brothers who have died who have gone to their rest in the hope of rising again, especially those we remember at this time. And we pray for those who've died alone, unloved, unmourned. May they all share the new life with you forever. 
And we ask for your mercy that we too may share in the gift of eternal life, together with Mary, the great mother of Jesus, with Joseph, her husband, with the apostles, with Francis and Claire of Assisi, and all those who have done your will throughout the ages. And may we always praise you in union with them and give you glory through your Son, Jesus, our Christ. For it is through him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, eternal Father, forever and ever. So as you've noticed over the years, Jesus teaches us this prayer and we use the plural pronoun, praying not only for ourselves, but for all. And so we pray with confidence, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. And deliver us, Lord, from every evil and grant us peace in our day. In your mercy, keep us free from sin. Protect us from all anxiety as we wait in joyful hope for the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, power, and glory are yours now. And Lord Jesus, you said, I leave you peace, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your people, and grant us the peace and unity of the kingdom where you live forever and ever. Amen. And may the peace of the risen Christ be with all of you. And with your spirit. Peace. And it is always by the power of God's Spirit that this bread and wine become sacred and holy, the life of the glorified risen Christ. And this is the Lamb of God, the one who does take away the sins of the world. And happy are we who are called to his sacred meal. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you. 
roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. May the body and the blood of Christ bring us life everlasting. So at home, you cannot receive, but make that communion song, Shelter Me, O God, your prayer, and know that God is always with you and is sheltering you. And I pray that all of us find that peaceful place in our lives, 
you know, not a physical place, but deep within us, Christ says, I leave you peace, and we can find that peaceful place in ourselves as we realize that God is with us every day. Uh, and as the last verse says, we'll look back and realize that God was with us during this pandemic and guiding us. So do not lose faith and let us pray. Almighty God, let the Eucharist we share fill us with your life. May the love of Christ, which we celebrate in the Eucharist, touch our lives and lead all of us to you. We pray this through Christ our Lord. Amen. So it's the Feast of Francis today, so I think you can bless your dogs and cats and parakeets and hamsters. And if you don't have a living pet, you can uh, have your children bring their teddy bears and you can bless their stuffed animals. So enjoy the day. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. And our Eucharist is ended and we go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Sacred spring.